Hi, this is Android Simplified, episode 1, and today's video is all about Wi-Fi. I will be demonstrating on my Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Okay, so let's get started. So if you go to your settings, straight away you'll see wireless and networks and Wi-Fi. Now simply put, Wi-Fi is a way of getting internet on your mobile device without connecting any wires. Now you will need to have pre-installed broadband in your home with any of your country's internet service providers with a wireless router. Now you should also have your wireless network name and password close at hand for this step. Now this here is a switch to turn your Wi-Fi on and off. So if you just press it and turn your Wi-Fi on, click on Wi-Fi and we can get started. Now because we turned our Wi-Fi on, your phone will automatically scan for nearby Wi-Fi networks and display them in a list here. When you see your Wi-Fi network, click on it like so. And this is the display box that you'll see. Now it will ask you for your password, so just type it in. You also have the option here to check this box called Show Password and it will show you exactly what you're typing. And that way you can make sure that you're not making any mistakes. So if you just finish typing in your password and click on Connect, it will authenticate your password and now your phone has Wi-Fi. Now if we go back onto this screen, you'll see another box here labelled Show Advanced Options. So if you just check that box, this is what you'll see. Now the first heading you can see is Proxy Settings. A proxy is basically like the middleman between your web browser and another computer called a server. Now a simple way of explaining how proxy servers work is to think of one person opening up a web page and another person wanting to access that same page. Now, instead of retrieving the data from the main server, the proxy has already stored a copy of the page when the first person opened it and sends it to the second person without burdening the main server, which in turn speeds up internet surfing. Now, in order to use this option, you will need to have a proxy server set up and know the proxy host name and port number. So if you want to set your proxy settings, click on manual here. And this is what you'll see. So if you just type in your proxy host name, the proxy port number here, and here for bypass proxy 4, you can enter the web address of the page minus the www. So for www.google.com, you would type only the domain name, which is google.com. Now, when you go onto these pages, the proxy servers will not be used for them, and it will access them straight from the main server. Now, click and connect once you've done that, and it will show up once you've typed in valid details in each of these three boxes here. And then, like I said, if you click and connect, you'll be set up. So if you go back onto this screen, you'll see the other heading under Advanced Options, which is IP Settings, right there. Now, IP stands for Internet Protocol, and you may have heard of an IP address, which is basically like a postal address for your phone on the Internet, and consists of a series of numbers. Now, Internet Protocol is... Well, simply put, it's basically a set of rules for sending information between computers on the internet that sets how one IP address communicates with another. Now, as you can see, there are again here two options, DHCP and static. So if we stick with DHCP for now. Now, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol and is controlled by a DHCP server, as you'd expect. So having this option enabled simply means you're letting a DHCP server assign your phone's IP address automatically. Now, generally, Dynamic IP assigns a different IP address each time you log onto your phone. But this does depend on your internet service provider, because some internet service providers only change the IP address when they deem it necessary. Now, the biggest advantage of Dynamic IP addressing is that there is less of a security risk as you're assigned a new IP address each time you log on. And that's all you really need to know about it. So now let's change the option to static. Okay, and this is what you'll see come up. Like so. 
Now on a static IP address, you basically have one constant IP address. Static IP addresses are best used for voice over internet protocols, which is basically a technology for making telephone calls over the internet. It's also best used for virtual private networks, which are private networks that use public networks to connect remote sites and users together. And it's also best used for playing online games or game hosting. Now, dynamic IP addressing is less reliable for these users because it could cause the service to disconnect. But the downside to using static IP addresses is they can become a security risk because the address is always the same. So from here, you can change the IP address. From here, you can change the gateway, your network prefix length, and you can also change the domain name systems from here, simply by clicking on them and typing it in. Once you've done that, if you just click on connect, which will show once you put in va uh, valid values in each of these boxes, sorry, each of these boxes, then click and connect and you'll be set up. Okay, so finally, back on this screen, on show advanced options, you can see your signal strength from here and you can also see what security protocols are in place to secure your wireless mobile networks from here. Now, you will tend to see only three types of security here. One is WEP, which stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy, which is a security protocol for wireless local area networks. And it's designed to provide the same level of security as that of a wired local area network, which in turn makes it more secure than a wireless local area network. However, it's not the most secure protocol available. Now, the second option is the one that you see here, which is WPA, WPA2, PSK. Now, WPA is short for Wi-Fi Protected Access, and it was designed to improve on the security of WEP, and it has improved data encryption and user authentication via the PSK. Now, the PSK is short for Pre-Shared Key, and it's the passphrase you use to access the Wi-Fi. Now, the third option is 802.1x EAP, and it is said to be the most secure. EAP stands for Extensible Authentication Protocol, and it provides a generalized framework for several different authentication methods. Now, there are three main processes involved here. One is the user who wants to be authenticated. Two is the actual server doing the authentication. And three is the device in between such as um, a wireless access point, which is basically the authenticator. That's all you really need to know here. So let's go back onto the main Wi-Fi screen. So you can also add Wi-Fi networks from here just by clicking on Add Wi-Fi Network, and it asks you for your network SSID. SSID stands for Service Set Identify, which is basically just the network name. And then you can choose the security type, and again, just type in your password. You again have the option to click on show password to show the password as you're typing it in. Once you've done that, if you click on save, then your new network that you've just added will show up in this list here. Now to rescan for available Wi-Fi networks, just click on scan here and you'll see a loading symbol and it will say scanning. However, I don't really see the point in that because every few seconds it will show a scanning symbol. As you'll see, there we are. And that was just after a few seconds. It does tend to do it automatically, but they give you the option there anyway. Now that's the end of episode one. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or would like me to review an app or explain any features or settings on your mobile device, please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to get a video out. Now, I will be making more episodes, so please subscribe to my channel for my up and coming videos. Thank you for watching Android Simplified.